I'm going to demonstrate how the track freeze functionality in Pro Tools works and what you can and can't do with it because they don't show you what the limitations of that track freeze functionality are. In this session, you can see that I have a contact drums track set up. So I have a contact instance of the drum sampler and I have MIDI tracks going to it. And I have all those tracks going to different outputs on the drums here. Now I can freeze these tracks by simply pressing the freeze button on the upper left hand corner of the contact drums. You can see a little snowflake icon. If I click on that, it'll give me a warning message saying that uh, there are output, auxiliary output stems on all those tracks, which are all these different outputs. If I click yes, it's going to write frozen tracks across all those aux outputs, which is what I have set up with that contact plugin. So it takes a few seconds, gives you the beach ball for a few seconds, but then it seems to work perfectly fine. Now if I want to undo all of that, I need to select all of those tracks because if I just click unfreeze on the drum track, on the instrument track, it'll only unfreeze that one track in particular. So then if I go down to these tracks and unfreeze them individually, so I select them all, I'm going to right click and select unfreeze. It will unfreeze them, but listen what happens. I hit the space bar and this output's grayed out. The instance is active. I don't see anything going on in the mixer. It's like that track completely died. Now if I want to bring that drum track back again, what I have to do is actually create a new track, go to track new, create another stereo instrument track, click create, drag that instance down to that new instrument track, and then select all the MIDI data, and then drag them down to that new track that I created. And now once I do that, I'll have my original sounds again. This seems to be a bug in the new track freeze functionality, and hopefully they fix it sometime soon. Now in this session, I have things set up a little bit differently. Rather than an instrument track, I have the contact drums instance, the instrument track, set up on an auxiliary send, a stereo auxiliary send. And I have the MIDI data on a track above that, and I have that being sent to the contact instance. And doing this bypasses that bug that is somehow inherent to the track freeze functionality. So this functions pretty much the same way. Now with this method, I can still freeze that audio just by going to that auxiliary input track that I have the instrument on and clicking the freeze icon. I'll get that same um, auxiliary output stems message and click yes on it. And a few seconds later, I have my same audio tracks. Now with this method, I can go in and click the unfreeze button, this snowflake icon. And it just unfreezes that top track. So the bottom ones are still there. So I still need to go in, select all those tracks, right click them to unfreeze them. The nice thing about using this method is I still keep my drums playing. There's no glitch with the instance at all. It still plays like normal. Now if I have any plugin across that track, it will automatically write that plugin on the frozen track, so I won't be able to adjust that with it frozen like that. So if I right click and freeze all these drum tracks again, or just do it from the drum plugin, you'll see that there's going to be some gaps in there when I have a gate going on across that snare drum. Now if I don't want that gate across that snare drum track, 
what I can do is unfreeze just that track. However, if I just right click it, if I bypass or deactivate that plugin, and then right click and select freeze, I wind up with nothing on the track. And that's because the original drum instance, the little drum instrument up here in this track is deactivated because it's frozen. So what I need to do is unfreeze this track, unfreeze the top track, and now freeze the bottom track again, just that snare drum track. Now you'll see that those gaps aren't there because I have turned the gate off. I know this sort of defeats the purpose of having track freezing, but you might find yourself in a position where you need to go back and forth between instantiating plugins and unfreezing and freezing different instruments to get what you want, and that's okay. Now suppose I want to have these instrument tracks, these raw drum tracks frozen on here, but I want to apply these and adjust these effects in real time. They allow you to insert freezing up to a certain plugin instance. So if I activate both these plugins, a compressor and a gate, I can right click on this gate plugin and it'll give me the option to freeze it up to this insert. Now when I do that, you'll see a little snowflake icon next to that gate. So that gate has been frozen on there. You can see the gaps on there when it's been frozen. So if I unfreeze it, if I want to, to add that gate in real time, I'm going to need to insert a dummy plugin up top because when I right click this instance, there's nothing that pops up. So I need to go on here and just select any plugin, put it in bypass, and now I can right click on it and say freeze up to this insert. And in doing this, adding this dummy plugin in there allows the following plugins to be adjusted in real time. Now a nice thing is that if I have a reverb plugin such as this Altiverb instance up here, which is a processor intensive plugin, I can actually freeze just that aux input the printed reverb basically is what I'm doing. So I can click the freeze track and I'll take the sends from the kick or the, the contact toms and snare that I have being sent there and it will write that printed to a reverb across that track. Just click the freeze button and it writes that reverb on there. Now if you adjust the sends you're going to want to refreeze that because it doesn't give you any sort of warning that you've changed any of the sends at all. You'll actually have to just reprint that so remember to do that. One last thing I want to demonstrate is if you have multiple tracks with MIDI data going to a single instrument, it will write all that MIDI data onto that instrument track. So here I have uh, an organ part with just some notes on one track, and on the MIDI track above it, I just have controller data controlling the rotary speaker. And here's how it sounds like without a printed track. So you can hear how it adjusted the rotary effect on the organ. Now if I freeze that track, this organ instrument track, I can just click on the freeze button. And just in the same way with the other tracks, you can see it writes the audio behind it. And now if I play that track, it will have that rotary speaker adjustment from this controller track above it written on this track, on the organ track. So this has been a demonstration of what you can and can't do with track freezing in Pro Tools. And this functionality is certainly going to change over different Pro Tools versions. This happens to be version 12.4, which just came out. So that's why there might be a few bugs in here that get taken care of over the next couple months, hopefully.